and hopefully we see it. Awesome. All right. So I think that's kind of like a dating game in a way, right? I really have no idea. Best friend, chicken. Is that curry? Is he writing pepper? <laughs> All right. So no controller settings. Okay, I'll um, put my controller way over here then. All right, sweet. Thanks for adding those emotes too, Matt. That's fun. Oh, so I love you, Colonel Sanders. Finger looking good. Dating simulator, yeah. Is it new? New game? Settings? It's loud. Music volume, sound effects. Let's turn it down a little bit. Prioritize speed, full screen. Yes, yes. Escape. Enter. Z close, X close, Z close. Oh, back. <laughs> Alright, let's go. New game. Welcome, Chef. Before we get started, tell us your name. Deku. Biscuits. Matt, I think we're gonna be eating chicken tonight. You see? Oh. Uh -uh. Yes, there's gonna be some reading here. Let me drink water. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in this moment forever. <laughs> oh my god. Or you can wake up right now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Fuck, 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 fuck. Throw it out forever. You sleep through the school year and give up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Wait, did we just speedrun it? Oh no, is the game over? I give... <laughs> oh no! Alright, I won't wake up with such a temper then. Game over already? You might not be good on princess. Okay, we'll try it again. Woo! Awesome! Woohoo! <laughs> GG's. Alright. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest seat in the apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in this moment forever. Or you could wake up like, now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock up and at him. Oof. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? And what will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. No, I know now. But daydreaming is nice. Wake up, Step. I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth equals brushed, hair equals comb, pits equals deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit to strut out the door and head off to class. Just what you need to get your blood flowing. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met and you absolutely love her for it. Miriam. Good morning, Stepu. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Uh, actually, um... Because I sure am excited for a little nervous. Okay, a lot of nervous. What the... What's the... Um, it's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well... When I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Oh, she's crying? Classic Miriam, raised by her master chef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person, I know. You're gonna do great. 
But the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl like Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <laughs> Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Change the subject. It's hard to see Miriam like this and frankly quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, we try to change the subject to something more interesting. All summer you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, enigmatic mystery student who was enrolled at this school. Yeah, that's a little worrisome, but you'll be fine. Now, what about the mystery student we read about on the school message board? Any new deets? Uh -huh. Oh, get this. I heard his name is Harland, and he's no ordinary student. They say he has powers. He, um, he's had them ever since he was born, like from an egg. An egg like a chicken? Don't be ridiculous. But that thing about having powers, it would line up with some of the other rumors I've heard. Like, I heard he once fought a bear with just a smile. People sigh thinking about the student so handsome that the laws of physics don't dare apply to him. Cheery me. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! Ah, uh, title got you! It's a dating simulator! Colonel Sanders is, um... Is an attractive hottie in this one, apparently, I think. I don't really know. But I've always heard about this game, it's free. Kind of like a small dating sim. And hi, Love Cross. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Um, hello, Ashley. Oh, damn. Oh, I didn't see you there. The chicken shins. You leave Stippo's shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. No, oh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she has to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, <laughs> has stopped to look at his own reflection in a mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Then, then. You run, run. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but it, as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. Substantially. <laughs> Attractive hottie in real life. Have you seen the mustache? You know, the facial hair. Is not for me. No. <laughs> I can't believe the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend the students. Ashley, I know, right? You think they just hand us over the diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. And let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers! As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window, directly next to it. Oops. Oopsie! The thing is broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Um, uh, that should do the trick. Love you! I think you mean thank you? My name's Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Although his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> Hi Pop. I'm Steppy, so... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both struggle. Oh, shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. 
Down at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Ooh, back at a class right here, next to the window. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Ah! My ears! The scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Sprinkles? Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he our culinary class? In our culinary class. You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Oh, what, what kind of voice do we give him? I'm not going to even remember. Hmm. It'll take on. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, but still demand respect. Woof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best goal ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fills the air inside the classroom. Pop. I'm chilly. Someone closed the window. And then... P walks in. <laughs> You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <gasps> Matt, he's got glasses like you. It's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Harland? Matt, you want to come in and do the voice for Harland? Will you be Harland? <laughs> Please. Please, call me Colonel. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. <laughs> Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Ashley. And this over here must be Sweaty Sweats a Lot. <laughs> Maybe we should open that window back up before Faucet gets the answer to a puddle and evaporates entirely. Edgar Figaro just Whoa! subscribed. Yo, I have Figaro? no idea what to say about this game. Have you played it? Who did you pick to be your number one senpai? I need advice. But yo, I hope everything's going well. Damn, tier two. Thanks so much. That's crazy. Thanks for being down. That's awesome of you. No, you haven't? Ah, oh, shit. I thought you were here to help, man. <laughs> but yo, thanks. 33 months? You're only two months away from, like, three-year badge, right? I'm only a few months away, too. Oh, shit. Time flies. That's crazy. Thanks again, Figaro. Hope all is best, man. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class, and what is with all of your really weird insults? You take a moment to clean yourself up. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a dating simulator. Yep. It's a good thing you didn't forget about the deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Steppu. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and get some ground rolls. With a spatula in the hand, Sprinkles, welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable, tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. That image on the wall definitely looks photoshopped in. I think that's art. We'll see. We'll meet art soon. Artudo. Student. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss. Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. That tardiness is unacceptable. 
even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across the town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see a student, Sprinkles is re referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. Sprinkles, oh Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep whiff. Mmm, -hmm. your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a, do a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart, but tough, is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? A ball. A rubber ball. You reach beneath your apron and return with a rubber ball in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. You toss the ball and he bounds after it, grabbing it in his mouth and swinging it from side to side before dropping it. The thrill passes quickly. It's not clear if that endeared you to him or not. Oh. <laughs> Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to uh, claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Stepu, there's a seat right here. It seems that no, no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Is this gonna choose who I date? We gotta hang out with Sanders. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me the seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can to do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Oh, it's probably just a show of pen, yeah. Or maybe it just ran out of ink. Maybe he's wearing it like a cuff link to keep his um, sleeves rolled up too. A lot of possibilities there. Yep. Oh, little pop, yay, a pop quiz about me. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're really ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. All right, it's train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A. How important is it to wash your hands before cooking? <gasps> extremely, extremely, doesn't matter at all. You could add extra flavor, hand flavor, depends. That's right. All right, next. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... A feather? I would think like a farm. Uh, I guess a feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. I love sporks. That's right. All right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat? A pink a pink cake pancake. It looks like a silly face. That's wrong? No, silly pancakes are great for a broken heart. Come on. Oh. Sprinkles a good boy. No? Yes? He's a talking dog that teaches a, at a culinary school. He's the best boy. And that's right. Total score four out of five. Uh, okay. We don't want to be too perfect. We did that on purpose. Only one wrong, not too shabby. You might just do all right, kid. You look up to see the Colonel Sanders has been watching you tell your score. He nods with approval, or he's just listening to music. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Whoa, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating, hell yeah. 
a delicious fragrance fragrance <laughs> lost through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Gotta be curry. Did you smell that? That must be your lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Hello, you folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Me, <laughs> yeah, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. Um, she said, shh. In honor of the new semester... Oh, in honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone at lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. <laughs> You hold your breath, waiting to see what bid this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? <laughs> Is this? Oh, Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket? With chicken? What a novel concept! Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating. For years I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing else, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. And he looks at me. Van Van. What? Do you think we want you? What? Your stupid recipe, dude? Pshaw. No, my dude. No. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. No. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah. And I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew that that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Hmm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try. He takes one bite, and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one piece of the, uh, one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket. Wait, why is bucket in quotations as if it's not a bucket? What are we reaching into? You sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' foods uh, transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Hmm. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor, savor the moment, and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. We're going to be a student about this. We're going to examine the flavors. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus in on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark, something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still, until you find it. Could it be? <gasps> He really did it. How bold. How adventurous to use blank blank blank. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. 
You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. Where'd everybody go? As you look around, you realize that everyone in the school, oh, the room is consumed by lunch. No one mentioned, or no one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. <laughs> After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach him? That's the only choice, I guess we have to. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I was wondering if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on the chicken? <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all times as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. I don't agree to that. And what's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Hmm, you've got moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone here, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. It smells like chicken. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use blah blah blah. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Blah blah blah, wow. You've never had guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some of your if you researched. And blah 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 definitely isn't the flavor you've tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared while everyone else is still in the cafeteria. You decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Oh, howdy. Hi. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the buildings. I think about how my story will continue after I've graduated. And sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can put on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is a perfect moment to show your personality to him. Hi, I play Taiko. Neg him to show your own strain? Like, arm wrestle? Wow. Wow him with a big idea to add things, additional ingredients, to really spice things up, be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty and savory and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliments, Deppu. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. Um, the next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking ooh, arena, nice. Where the afternoon lessons will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they can need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show off our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff? What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowds of fans. You're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny bid creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders? <gasps> I pounce on him. Oh, she's sad, dude. No. Hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle the lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, Steppy. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Pop and girlie's bot. Hello, new partner. <laughs> oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Clink. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam wants to be partnering with Clink today. 
It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Work, work, work. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. <laughs> Tissue, I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders and panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. And looks like you too will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Sprinkles. Alright, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. <gasps> Don't divide me. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Uh, which dish do you suggest your partner... Sanders. Steak tartare seems pretty easy. Isn't that raw beef? It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we can make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe a mash of potatoes? And the gravy? I, I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to get beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. And I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <gasps> you don't trust my judgment. <sighs> Ashley. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders, heart is my business. And you'd better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Oh, no, jeez, Van Van. Mom well, over here crushing Stepu's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. But that was a deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looks like Steppy was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was gonna say, Colonel Saunders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day, you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! You doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to come call creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has a uh, position itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick, if it makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders a hunk of hunks in your time of need? Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie. You turn to Miriam, who we ditched earlier. As soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. If somebody threatening my friend, I will destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Van are just leaving. Leaving you in the dust? Via V, my skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from the competition? You're surely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend. The step is my partner for today's activity. We look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Found those cute corgis and their sweet but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot? Distracted by the trauma, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and cream flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps, you know, so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hands. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothered in your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The rest looks spectacular. Granny would be very proud. 
Is this game an advertisement? <laughs> Paranormal sound, there's holds this fork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but it doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for a small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. Boop. If you love some- oh, If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders, aka Mercury. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Then, then, do something, do something. Scooping up in the fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he never be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Sprinkles, hold it right there, Stepu. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sounders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes face? Dan Dan rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I've prepared a few old meal. These upon my specialty, braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce, plated on a battle axe, laid forth from my supreme chief chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. The end is now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will all look on me with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Ban Ban and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off his plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh... I think I lost something in the oven. I, I don't feel so good. It killed him! Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up into Pop's mouth. A Pop winces in pain for a moment, then is almost immediately back at his obvious self. Ipsy! It tastes like poison! The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moment. Pop has frozen the whole crew. On the crowd, there is motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moments and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things despite obvious danger has in inoculated yep, inoculated him against poisons of all kind. I'm not sure the professor here makes enough money. Oh, ghost is here. Um, hello. They turn into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sander Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not as great as a representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. Hey, the duh. <laughs> Have you played this before? They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Deppu? There's something I need to tell you. Uh -huh. Oh, they're out there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream. That one day, 
I would be the greatest chef in the world that the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. And we should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. And that's our souls, mm, that our souls may grant them like wishes, floating on a shooting star. <laughs> Too hot for you? <laughs> hey, no, I, you, no, no, I'm the one here to see inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, me, me. I'm the hero. A spork monster? A spork monster is here to fight a hero? Huh? I, uh, I think I'll have the first door open. Later, nerds. Huh? Well, there you threatened me. Just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Yikes! Be afraid, be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Uh, is, is he's rhyming on purpose or is that a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn based fight sequence? Oh shit, what will you do? Oh hell yeah, what? This is like straight from Final Fantasy. I'm gonna defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? A trepidation. You close your eyes tight. But then, open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield? For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what's coming next. Spork monster goes into the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. That a lot of good that defense did. Attack. You decide to go on the attack. Chow down. Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. <laughs> Spork monster focuses their mass of mind and draws in energy from their mother earth itself. They grow large and more intimidating. How do you respond? Attack! You decide to go on the attack. What do you use? Love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack. Hey, you're supposed to use a move for buffing up. Spork monster uses utilitinsel. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack. You decide to attack. Cook with love. One damage. Pork monsters oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Pork monster prepares for its ultimate attack around its edge. Colonel Sanders, vile villain. Your region of or your reign of terror is up to your region. <laughs> Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chicken. <laughs> Hot pie power pinch! Hot pie power pinch does 10 damage! Spork monster is defeated. You saved me! An injured spork monster is fused steam into the night. Forget. Mercy finish him. Spare the wretched beast. There. He manages to tamp down you disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity. Not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. So if we killed him, would he have left something? It's a book of magic spells. It was a golden chick and on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it is Borko. Hmm. Borko, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet night of the sky, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely defeated. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He's in our room. He must have helped you home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. And what a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night.
my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. <clears throat> this. But for some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Easy, easy, easy. You wake up on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used blah blah blah. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in the front of school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with this fork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Miriam. Okay, I noticed my sound a little strange, but I think I might be, uh... Not pregnant. Okay. I think I might be like Clink. Uh, you like him? Wait, like like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him I like. I like him. I like like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he voted. He was voted prom king at high school. He didn't even go and was also the convertible that himself rode into the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking that maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. <laughs> Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy. Like I am, with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school? The famous student who ever attended the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> yeah, sure you did. You're right. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? I'm laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of the secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a secret, a second ingredient too. Which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes lighten up. A secret ingredient? Yeah. I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? <laughs> Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Hmm. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices, the secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with him and brought them home. He was so nice, he even asked me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both shared an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about the new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know one ingredient, so I thought it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has, has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. No? I'm gonna have to make up a fake one. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret? Yeah, it's a secret, dude. Make it up. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. It sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in, cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders, he's arriving at school. 
stand back and admire. I'm not gonna run to him. <laughs> Colonel Sanders horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's been watched, he did the short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free to the countryside. You're so struck by the light of the sight of him that you lose ability to speak coherently? Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Uh, don't worry. He knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out right. What a horseful beauty uh, you have. I mean, what a horseful beauty you have. Dang it. That's just what I said. Being a good friend, Miriam comes over to cover for you. Oh, Stapu, just gets really nervous around people they like. <laughs> what? This isn't helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and we're up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. It gives you a wink and smile as to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, having you, oh, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you see that your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over at Van Van's hulking shoulder. <laughs> His outfit? He's just wearing this underneath. <laughs> Why did I barely notice that? <laughs> Oh, he sees you coming. Hello there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Oh. Ashley, why don't you make like a bee and mind your own bees facts, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try to get a closer look. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behaviors. Culinary schools to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Good. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes a nash. And it does hurt to use a little evil. Oh, it doesn't. It does hurt too. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book. Just like the one you found in your counter with the Spork Monster. And that's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Oh, we're playing! Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Plank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clink, but Clink shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me. I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourself. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't, honestly. I don't care. I've got a lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. This then sprinkles the rice to signal the true start of the class day. He's pink. Oh, he's panting. Which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope that you're ready to learn. You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. You'll pet the teacher. Sorry, sorry. I get a little worked up if people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. 
But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Stepu. Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Water. You grab the glass of water and gulp it down. It's cool and crisp, like the purest snow melted by a mountain spring. Hey, that was mine. It was from my favorite toilet. You owe me six dollars. And you've got excellent taste. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay attention better. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals answer to make a dramatic announcement. Zan Dan. Today's lunch will be prepared. The, uh, time competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics for these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time, step up and tell them they're on. You're on! A little bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down, so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool, fool! Good one, Dan Dan. I like your grump... Grumption, Stepu. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer. <laughs> Just then, a huge light blasts into your face, flashing, flashing the words, timer ready. And that's what I'm talking about. Are you? Step boom, I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidity, a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me. In case anyone was wondering, I hope this message lets you the victory. Ashley, I like a diamond that was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. <laughs> I will defeat you myself. Uh, you had his chicken and you made his mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does boil water boil at? That's wrong. <laughs> I'm Fahrenheit, man. Kekuna speaks to me. I'm sorry. What were you thinking, Stepu? Get your head in the game. Uh, you're going to need to season his chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Snyder's recipe exactly, but you have an idea. 10? 11? Okay, you're right. You might not know all the ingredients, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. All right, all right, let's say the man offers you the most flavor. Um, gratitude, that's right. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy, so where does it come from? A small town where big dreams are formed. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. Sprinkles, I will. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? That doesn't make, uh, uh, don't make me get the spray bottle. All right, next question. You notice Colonel Sanders out in the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Stepu. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy will it take to pull a traditional... Blah, 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 blah. What were you thinking? Get your mind... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're standing on the desert island with the only one uh, cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Uh... What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? Woof woof! I'm really struggling to keep up, but the next station over Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixture. As you do, the crowd gasps! Eee! Yikes! I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen, but sometimes that means sacrificing a personal touch. Wee. You might not have any hands, but Stefu does. And a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. 
There's an easy way and a hard way. But you don't get far by doing the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer and rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Oh no! Step fail! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning feeders. There's no way you'll ever be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Oh no. Thanks for the drink, Matt. He's disappointed. He's shaking his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way could turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle's over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. No, it wasn't. I was really far away. Wrinkles, sweetheart. Look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Stepu's injury. You see, Sprinkles begins to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I was, um, uh, supposed to sh uh, I suppose you should at least tell us what you have prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights. Taking you on a journey of flavor to taste good and tell the story of excellence. I was going to ask Steppo to do the honor, but... Since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, refueling the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette, a top, a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Mm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places his sauce-covered finger onto his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize his rage, put yourself between... I mean, I guess if anything, we wouldn't just stand there and let it happen if someone was, like, coming on a mat. No. Nope. You reach out with your apron and wipe the sauce off of his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. This goatee isn't just a fashion statement. It's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Oh god! Game over? We have to- No! What? Do we have to do it from the beginning? I'm not reading all that again. <gasps> Corrin. <laughs> Try again? Wait! Oh no! Did we really? Did we really ruin that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Alright, here, we're gonna, we're gonna speedrun this. Demand that they stop wasting our time. I'm gonna do this. Tell them, shut up, you're on. <laughs> I'm glad that we get another retry, like, right here. I thought that we were gonna have to do it all over again. Alright, we get to relax the, the mouth and... Lungs for a bit. I know, Matt. I was like, shit. I'm just gonna skip it all. Okay, 100 C. Yeah, Celsius wins. All right, see if I get this right. Uh-huh. 11, uh-huh. Walking in tail. Basic steps, elevator path. Gratitude. Uh-huh. Uh, this one, that's right. And silence, that's right. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Stepu. He's actually cheering you on. Okay, now we're distracted. So I guess we do get distracted with all of these silly answers. What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Riding together in a gondola. You're really struggling to keep up. Next station over, Ashley is already putting everything together. You throw your biscuit into the mixer and everyone cringes at you and says they can't believe this. And shames you for it. So you stick your hand back in there and pull it out. But then it breaks! It breaks all of our hands and we can't play Taiko anymore. And then they stop the competition. And this time we're not gonna like it between them. We're just gonna stand there and rage.
All right, he pours a chocolate in there. That's actually pretty cool. Hmm. <gasps> oh, you. Eternalize the rage you feel. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash and they fall off of your face, which means people will have to a hard time understanding your emotion for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He pro he's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from the run-in with the mixer. And that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I walked other paths in the memory of the dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock. I even failed as a meal handler. And that one was especially humiliating. Meals can be so cruel. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I've resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would ever deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changed his focus, he could see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scared from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. Sporko. Sporko? It is. I know I said I want to be back, and after a whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know... I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Sporko. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of the night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong and cooking school can be can put a person under a lot of per, uh, pressure and stress. I actually used to go to the school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. Ah, uh, don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever. Oh, but I was still a student. Until one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me. And I was forever transformed. Magic spell book. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. Now, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and goyle. Goyle. <laughs> if you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there is some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Step them together. I'm sure we could defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with them. Are these his baby pictures? It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Oh, there is something. 
it's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm just not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Saunders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish he might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy, both perhaps? Now that now you've got him right where you want him, should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret? Keep it a secret. Actually, I've said too much. Please forget I said anything. You can practically hear Colonel Sanders' heart beating in his chest. He tries to act in mirror, but his facade begins to crack. I can appreciate a good secret, of course. In fact, I've got many, nearly a dozen in my fried chicken recipe alone. But I would hope that you could learn to trust me with yours. Well, I suppose you did share a secret ingredient with me yesterday, so it'd be only fair. Colonel Sanders' face grows serious. Oh, yes, about that. You see... Yes, Colonel? I haven't been completely honest with you. The secret I told you was a fake. No, no. The ingredient you shared with Miriam wasn't true? Yeah, it was a lie. On purpose. You're angry with Colonel Sanders for lying, but the fact that you revealed his secret shows that he was probably right to do so, but I didn't. I didn't. You mean, it wasn't one of the real 11 secret herbs and spices? You see... We only had just one minute. Uh, we had only just met, and I had to make sure that you were trustworthy and capable of keeping my most important secret. To me, my recipes are priceless. Well, I have something to confess. That secret ingredient you told me, I shared it with my friend Miriam, my bestie. Hmm. Unfortunately, I already knew this. I was very disappointed, but now that you've come clean, we can start building our relationship as fellow chefs again. I promise to be more honest from here on out. I really do. I'm counting on you. And then in that case, I present to you my original kulsa. Ew. <laughs> Yucky. The shredded cabbage disc glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux Hideaway. Uh, when are we going to make the mac and cheese? And the pot pie. I like the pot pie. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire it seats later and think back to this moment with tears in his eyes. You could offer to make it more, but he seems like very sentimental. He wants that one. Sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a minute. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping? What? We don't do that. You don't snoop. I don't snoop. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on the item to discover more about Colonel. But it appears to be Colonel Saunders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. The future? Maybe this is where he discovers one of the secrets of herbs and spices. Rich Snoopin. Wait, he was born with glasses. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and the mustache combo, he sports, he figured that this must be Colonel Sanders himself, yeah. That or it's his kid. That or maybe it's a drumstick that seems to be waving like a rattle. That boo, who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Well, you know, your parents usually have that stuff and they want you to take it eventually, so the parents took it. it used to belong to his parents. Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? Why not? Tap on an item to discover more about Colonel. One of the frame pictures shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders start standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. No they, wait, no, they don't. That's a lie. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Tap on an item to discover more about it. Yeah, this chicken. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting in the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real? Taxidermy? It must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. He is sentimental. A little nut clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then the ghost of the student pops up? What's he doing here? Were you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I couldn't tell you my name right now. It's... Oh, yo! Hey, Decipher! 
Thanks for the raid. Pom pom girl, the cipher. Mega monkey. Ten minutes live. Yo, how's it going? Hope it's going well. We are um, in Colonel Sanders' house right now. I don't know if this game is like an ad or what, but it talks a lot about Colonel Sanders and KSC. But decided to be a, a pretty cool game for today. <laughs> but hey, welcome. I hope your stream went good, Decipher. I'm back here behind the chat. Yeah, a little chicken house. You look extremely subtle. That's e rave. Yo, thanks so much, Decipher. I hope you had a really good stream, too. Any problems with the internet? Internet's been alright. Hopefully, your grocery shopping went good, too. Top of an item to discover more about the kernel. Yo, let's see what the candle this is. Really? That's us. Uh... Oh, shit. Bite attack. Thanks. Hey, we got the little dumb conga, dude. Whenever anyone subs, that's what happens. Thanks for the two months. That's really cool. Two months badge unlocked. Super hype and welcome. Hope everyone's having a really chill day. Been doing a lot of reading here. It's good. Good stuff. A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. A power tool. Power tool smell? Maybe. Freshly starched collar? A piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69. No. It's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's blah 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 blah. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. You set up for two years earlier? Damn. Yeah, that's right. It was two years. That's crazy. I'm gonna unlock the, th the, the three year badge soon. Isn't that nuts? Almost affiliated for three years. Look at Mr. Cool Guy here. <laughs> a lock of silver hair is flowing through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair they're in isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. Shit. That's cool. Take a look, uh, closer look at the urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty. But when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. I think I looked at everything, right? Oh, the safe. This must be where he keeps a secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Pan chicken be prepared sashimi style. I don't think raw chicken's that good. I don't think you're supposed to do that. All right? Tap on an item to discover it. All right, that's good. I think we looked at everything, man. Let's go to the store. You open the door to Colonel Saunders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. Take one off its hanger and try it on. <laughs> Jack is a bit big for you. It's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in its scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Nah. I think, like, even, like, beef tartare sounds crazy to me. I don't mind, like, like, raw fish and stuff, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, chicken sashimi sounds really bad. Salmonella bad. Not good. Even the texture, I don't think would be that yummy. Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. <gasps> I'm not snooping. Nope, we're not snooping. Nope. He has a new dish that has been he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try and act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. You decide now is your moment to make the big move. You tell him you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Yes? Stepu? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. And I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence? Oh my god. I developed feelings for the streamer. <laughs> Steppu. Easy, 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 easy. You awake to a beautiful morning of Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Wait, we're not at his house? Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today's the day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient that you just learned about, blah 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 blah. 
In some jurisdictions, blah, 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 isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast they whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When he returned, he's waiting to ask an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. Nicosine and your taste buds, that is. Ah, such confidence, such grace. Uh, could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Take him down a peg? Yeah, I, I could fail. I've only failed once, besides the very beginning. He's too confident. Take him down. It's good, but my mom made it better. Colonel Sanders' expression grows serious. Did your little jab land too hard? <laughs> Colonel, I'm... I know what you're gonna say. I need to be better if I'm gonna leave my mark on the world. A single tear begins to pull into the center of his eyes as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a lot of reading. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm gonna drink some water too. Right? This is free too. I've had it for a long time. It was recommended to me like back in 2020, but I never really found the time to play it. But I think I knew that it was gonna be a lot of reading. Water time. You enjoy story time? Yeah. It's pretty chill. I get to relax the hands some. Oh, you hey, ate! Double water time. Thanks. Appreciate it, Decipher. Hydrate your butt, but it's not thirsty. And they melt this. <laughs> yeah, dating sims do be like that. Visual novels and stuff, too. Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something might have happened to you. That's okay, I was just... But now that it's... Uh, it turns... <laughs> more water. <laughs> but now that it turns out that you're fine, I could finally get you up to speed with the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and be respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know a little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Does she just say skydiving as if it's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? Yeah, Clink's a, a talking pressure cooker. At the school. <laughs> I set her up with him. And now, I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story. However, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. Ah, uh, we should listen to her. And I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent a night with him. You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right? <laughs> After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Damn, did I just break up with my best friend? She's trying to help me say, like, you know, stay focused on school and stuff, young wowzers. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop. So he himself may not quite grasp the fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you go pick on someone your own size? Mm, because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. And there is that... A horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. 
But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Steffi, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accidentally makes you wince in pain. Because in life you can go on cooking like that, might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears. Things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person. He senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Steppu? How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in a fighting form by this afternoon. <gasps> Ashley. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner has decided, but, um, your presentation was quite impressive. What's he doing complimenting her? Hmm. Ashley. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about your how your food's received. And that's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Stapu. I am more than capable of speaking for myself. <gasps> Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk to class, Colonel? I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of fine foods. See you inside, Stapu. Annoyed by Colonel Saunders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Miriam? Whoa! That's the book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found laying around. I wouldn't appear... Oh, it would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it were really powerful? Hehehe. <laughs> Thanks for the lurk, Decipher. We'll catch you later. Hey, you got a moment badge. That's cool. I wonder what moment... Oh, it was a 24-hour moment, man. I remember that. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open the page to... Um, Arcane Warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it'll erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That's way drastic! Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times calls for desperate measures. Got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. No. Memories help heal, man. We just can't, like, erase shit. Don't do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. <clears throat> I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on. But I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry, reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait and see what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. What time is it? 12.20? When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence? I told you to never come back here, Terrence. They will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You'd better not show your, your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tune. I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Stepu, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. But before I can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. Oh no. I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? 
Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. <laughs> but no! You had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Jill and J and J forever. And watch us from a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. <laughs> Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff. I don't care. Sad beep. Link begins to shudder. Dean pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Aww. Beep. <laughs> no amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clink. Clink burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. The clink slowly rose out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we must be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam trademark. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam. Are you okay? Uh. Okay? I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. And Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. Rage. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on the Colonel Sounders stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a, po a pony out there with your name on it. And a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clink or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who doesn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. What a good friend. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make it a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay. Because you had a better idea of how to spend it um, the time before your exam. You decided to head into the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge, a test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent, a test of step, stepu, and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van and his supposed man man and his eviler counterpart Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe that you've been working on. Stepu's famous chicken pot pie. I love pot pie. Yes, yes. I was practicing for months making this dish. Um, comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do... Your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders, the cheater. Steppy, what are you doing here? There's still time before the exam. No, oh, just taking it all in. Um, big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? And that's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get into your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decided it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when... <gasps> the oven timer goes off behind you, ignore it like there was no sound. That's up about your practice dish. Okay, okay. You got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie a hundred yards- four hundred yards away. 
That's an oddly specific distance, but uh, you'd expect nothing less from such a nose. You knew it was a pot pie from just the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie. With an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I could smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. Damn wow. Matt, I think this is an ad. But you know what? We've, we've been talking about getting this. Yeah. Yep, we've been talking about getting a pot pie. It's beautiful. You know what? I shared a picture of a pie this morning on my on my camera roll. I think I had made that pie. Like, I rolled it out and everything. I cut it into, like, a little lattice. And then I folded it like a little basket. It's so cute. If I remember, I should show it after stream. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. <laughs> I know, right, Matt? It's crazy. Matt added that to, like, um, one of our, our dinner shopping carts a few days back. Because everything always closes on us. So we have, like, backup carts that got cancelled. So we just keep them there. <laughs> For when, like, we don't want to think about what we want to eat. Since we don't have a car, we got to order, like, everything to go. There's really nothing too close by to easily walk to or bike to. So, delivery is what we live on. I'm glad that we can, though. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Wrinkles lays down the ground rules. Whoa! There are no rules, that is, except to cook with everything you got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide the mac and cheese plus the pot pie that you've been practicing or just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. How did I know that? Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes for their usual over-the-top shelves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big on going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Marion furiously injects ingredients into the itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baxter Blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roll. Ashley skips her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality, spatula. Even Clink gets in on it. Five dial pressure clink cooking cooking technique. Wait, when did Clay learn English? <gasps> it's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. Van Van quickly unplugs Clink and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tides? You've got a book of your own, and you're not- oh, and you are desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? No. Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? Exactly. I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Stepu. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Stepu, since we were little kids because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. <laughs> Miriam, what about your dish if you're here cheering who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. <laughs> oh, that's sweet, but... Oh, he's got a wink emote. Nice. I unlocked one yesterday. Or maybe it was the day before when I stopped in. I like his squirtle emotes. They're cool. Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Spork monster. It is I, Steve. The spork monster. 
Steve, wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out a bit? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of up middle of something. Do you mind? Final exam? Step back. Steve the spork monster notices that you've got a grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess it. Sorta. Uh, if you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles into the pot of salted water? <laughs> yeah, this whole game really is, yeah. It's funny. I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You can feel a spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Well, he used to be a golden a retriever, and then dark magic turned him into a spork monster. <laughs> nice, Matt. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in the monster school that I had fallen asleep during the scare tactics class and when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. <laughs> Never mind. I'll see you later. Good luck. Alright. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know if you could win. You summon extra power from deep within yourself, you give up and drop out of culinary school. Yeah, we should just walk away. No. Step it up. And I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this. This is student. Yes, Tapu, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you could do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you are powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Stepu, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I am here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? And what about the rules? Following the rules have never been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid eyes on. And besides, something unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students! But time expired. It's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Plank? From off screen, you hear pure and innocent giggle that could only come from one student. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm flying! It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hooked by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Well, let me guess, did Dan Dan have something to do with this? Always crying. When someone asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. Oh, it looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing as how he couldn't cook anything. <laughs> Hello, Colonel. Hi, howdy. We're on our final exam of class. I think we're going to get this, Fosher. Hi. I hope that you had a really nice day, Fosher. It must be really late. No, it's early. It's like 5 a.m. for you. Aw. I can't feel my legs. Can, may I be excused? Sure. 
You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCS all AL history. AL. <laughs> AL history. But it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Blink. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature where a beep or another onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure out that later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I have made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny naromaki? I spy a float on its itty bitty bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea that I made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed, but she gives... Oh, she gives you a big hug. You chug. Thank you, Stepu, for helping me to believe in myself. Ben Ben, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard and an axe-hill urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second? Different color type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brown. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to sloth around, slosh around. Woof woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Aw, ouch, my tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified. Or glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps down the bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley. It's time to step up. Now describe your dish. <laughs> I made... Orange blossom, a Turkish delight, and a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and concoct, connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. We'll need the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Stepu? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. <laughs> if I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Uh, I suppose you could smell it. If you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard, you might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to, the re uh, to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've seen of me, either. 
Or her to be, too. And if this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself all. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become some... <clears throat> has become something else. What? Oh my god, is this to promote that, that bowl, dude, where they just shove everything in? <laughs> he examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing it. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Don Chen? Just when I thought I've seen everything in his kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blown me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and purely ba uh, perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, the fact that everyone passes the class. <laughs> you pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. <laughs> Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. <laughs> the new menu item is so impressive that even the Dan Dan and Ashley are drawn back into the magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, uh, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that that school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment. To get the groove on? <laughs> The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. The Stewart Cafeteria, established 2015. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking area, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <gasps> oh shit! DJ Dog is in the house! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? <laughs> He says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> oh, Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghost allowed at the graduation. It is clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was a trick to get you to finally notice me. <laughs> oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together. <laughs> ignored. It's the Spork Monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster's no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. The student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up in talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. Aww. A dejected student walks off. We'll never know his name. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. The red carpet rolls out across the floor of the battle room. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A, a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had, to, we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling, oh no, sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clink, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Well, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Quink, and I am not of this Earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clink. Aww, I mean, I guess, okay. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to suppress you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clink disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. 
Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's f a full meal? Full meal deal? I want french fries instead of coleslaw. Double starch, baby. <laughs> All starch. I didn't get to- oh, I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? Wait, that's it? <gasps> oh! No, it's not the end! So everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you, sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Steppu, what are you doing, sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Spicy mask, tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I'd love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take the day off and I'll be glad to spend it together with you, Stepu. <laughs> oh, sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um... I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. Look at him judging me. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll in pastry school. Oh my dear Stepu, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. The end end? That was cute. I had fun. So loud. Scared me. Hey, that was fun. Watch this now. Coleslaw? A Saya production? Move my mouse. It's a good song. I wonder if this song is on Os. It's gotta be on Os, right? Nice, that was really cool. I'm glad I finally got to play that. Yeah, all right. I guess exit. I guess we're done. That was cute, though. I think it came out in 2015. I mean, I just saw that, like, on the banner in the background, so I can only assume. Exit? Are you sure you want to exit the game? Yeah. 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 Hey, we did it, Matt. We did it. Valentine's Day Dating Simulator, a.k.a. KFC Advertisement Done. <laughs> guess we know what we're eating tonight. Back to the desktop. Yo, but I guess um, I didn't really have anything else planned. Let's see. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's great. All right, let me download it. With your Colonel Sanders game trailer. Oh shit, should we play it really fast? Catch the beat map? <laughs> Here, I, I want to play it. Here. Let me just change it up to O's really fast. I'm curious. Not sure if it's any good. We'll see. That's at least the song. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'll just change my title to high. That's easy. All right, let me uh, open up OS as well. Download the map. Where's OS? Oh, I unpinned it. I need to add it back to my pin tabs down here. Yes. All right, yo. Make sure I switch that out. We'll just play this really fast. Okay, it's turned down, so no double audio, so that's great. Let me just download the file. Yo, I hope that everyone's having a good day too, man. Thanks for even chilling. I think that's awesome. Just play this really fast and I think we'll be done, so. 
turn this down. Shh, no double audio. I started turning down the wrong thing, thinking that that was my music, so. Sounded a little bit offbeat there for a second. See. Circles. Okay, paste so that there, so I'm signed it on this one. I could directly download. Oh, there's a video. Download this video. Click. Didn't open for me. There it is. Ah, let me play this really fast. I'm down. Thanks for sharing it, Scared Mo. You forgot to put hashtag ad? Next time. And our next playthrough. Our 100% man. Original finger looking good. We'll do finger looking good. But it's in Tycho. Hold on. We need to change it to catch the beat round here. Uh, that's only 27 seconds. Oh, shit. I was hoping it would be like a little bit longer. All right, let's see. Oh my God. All right, the video looks a little bit scuffed, but it's um digital compression, I think. Oh my God. Those jumps are pretty hard here. We're gonna put on Scorby too, no fail. And maybe put this up a little bit so it's easier to see the patterns in front of it. Cute. Uh. Damn. Awesome. All right. I think that'll be it for today's stream, man. Let's see. It feels like I haven't been live for very long. Oh, it's already been like five hours. That's crazy. But yeah, we played some Taiko earlier, then we finished off Stray, and then we also completed this game right here. I love you, Colonel Sanders. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. And then now that Stray is done and checked off, we can get started on Far Cry 3. Let's see. Far Cry 3. So whenever we want to switch it up from Taiko tomorrow, we could do this. We wear steam so we can pop it on. Desktop. Cool. And we'll turn this down and turn up my music over here. Let's see. Far Cry 3. Yup, yup, yup. So, this will be the next game that we are putting into the mix. And then later, once Octopath Traveler comes out, I want to get that. We've already played a little bit of the demo, about one hour. You get three hours to play on the demo, but I think I'm still gonna wait until it comes out, invest all my time on that. And that is released February 26th, I think, right? October <laughs> to Path Traveler. Damn, 60 bucks. It's a big game though. I remember playing part one for like three months. My friend already owns this game? Shit. Big girl already bought it. I think I'm gonna already buy it too. I think we got enough right now. We could do that. Brand new entry in the Octopath Traveler series. First installment initially released in 2018, sold over 3 million copies worldwide. But yeah, you get to choose between eight different characters to start with, build your party, kind of like turn based play. The pixels, the animations, the music, it's all so good. The bokeh, everything, man. Love it. But that'll be later this month. Right now, it is. Cool, so Far Cry 3, I don't even know. I'm gonna take my time. Doesn't really matter how quickly we get through a game, as long as I. Have fun, man. And yo, thanks for anyone joining and having fun with me. I hope that you have a really good rest of your day, whatever time it is, man. Thank you. Thanks again for anyone. All those raids. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's cool. It played pretty okay on, on catch. I just still I am a little bit rusty with catch. But yeah, here. Um, I don't know if anybody's live to raid up. I, I would love to raid someone up. I'm following live here. Close that. Great forcing. Let's 
scrolling down. Rage is catting. <laughs> Borson? Nah. You want me to raid Borson? That's funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna raid Adorable Kittens. <laughs> I think this channel is great. I've been following it for a long time. Who doesn't love kittens? I love kittens. Hell yeah, we're gonna go watch some kitten action, man. Yo, Mega Monkey, take it easy. Thanks for hanging out. Take good care, man. Matt, see you very soon. We're gonna go order some ice cream, dude. Yeah, we're gonna get ice cream tonight. I'm looking forward to that. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow, man. In Discord, um, above, and, uh, SoundCloud. Yeah, we got a little SoundCloud, man. But yeah, let me also pick out an outro song. And cats. Do you have an awesome cat song? I don't think I do. Here, let's put on magic moves. See you later. Take good care. We end and out. Try Hex Cute Stream? Try Hex Cute Stream? Let me see. Let me see Try Hex. You want me to raid Try Hex instead, Matt? Yep. Cryhex was one of the very first people we ever followed. I was playing Step Mania cute. Oh! Oh! That would be cute! A couple playing Step Mania- you know what? We're, we're not gonna raid adorable cats, we're gonna raid Trihex. Cause that is super cute. Him and um, his girlfriend, they're playing Step Mania together! I love it! We're gonna raid Trihex. Yeah. Yeah, cats will always be there. Cats will always be there. I'll still, I'll, I'll share this in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, shout out adorable kittens. Oh. There you go. In case you're not familiar with that channel, they go through a lot of different letters and they just kind of display it. They take really good care of them too, so that's cool. Yeah, peace out. See you later. Thanks for hanging out. Good boys. Boom. Thanks for the follow. Good games are extinct in 07 and Tink aka and Florasa. Decipher for the raid. Oh no, does it resub too? Decipher resub, Pantera resub. The gifts from Kashui too. Yo, catch you later, Hapsa. I'll be tuned, turning it off now. Peace. Bye. Get good eating scared milk. See ya.